Julia, for fans out there who haven't had the opportunity to meet you, tell us a little bit about yourself and your music. Not classically trained. I taught myself by ear when I was really young. And it was just kind of my idea of getting the neighborhood kids together to do something. So I guess you could say I wrote my first song when I was super young. Um, and then I just kind of balanced the the chase of my musical dream with wanting to be a reporter until I figured out I didn't want to be a reporter. <laughs> and then I moved to LA from New York City a couple, three years ago now, um, to do a TV show with Bravo called Misadvised, where I got to be myself and play music. And I just kind of stayed out here and have been building um, my YouTube and social media since then. And here I am. Yay! Music isn't your only talent. You were quite the athlete growing up and in college. Can you tell us a little bit about those experiences? Yeah, I am. Um, my mom just didn't know what to do with me because I was like, you know, an insane kid. And so she put me into gymnastics, which was a smart idea. Um, and I did that until I was 15. And then I switched to springboard diving and did that throughout college at the University of Miami. So that was a really cool part of my life because I got to dive alongside of um, Olympians as my teammates. It was pretty awesome. But it also showed me that um, I really didn't want to be a professional athlete. <laughs> it was fun, but I was like, cool, you know, five a days. And I was at five, five practices a week and two a days. And just, you have to really love it. And, uh, and it was a great, it taught me a lot about discipline and dedication, but, you know good part of my life that I'll leave there. Julia, was there a particular moment that it just clicked that you wanted to be a musician? Um, that's an interesting question because I think I always felt like I was a musician, but um, when I was really honest with myself, I remember I was actually working behind the scenes at Good Morning America and I thought, okay, if I'm not happy here, it probably isn't what I really want to do. And that was kind of a weird, that whole year when I figured it out, it was a very weird transition. Um, but somewhere along the way, it just kind of clicked. And that was also the first time I played a live show in New York, New York City. And it all just, it was like a very, like I said, a, tra a strange transition. And then like at one moment, I was just like, yeah, I want to do this full time. And ever since then, it's just kind of been like the, the laser focus. The staff at Good Morning America had a little bit to do with you taking that final step and getting the courage to pursue music. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. I, um, I remember I was, so I was the green room coordinator at Good Morning America, which if you don't know what that means, it's basically I was the person who greeted everyone who entered the building. Um, I was like 20 when they hired me, which is kind of crazy when I think about it. So I was there for two and a half years, and um, Chris Cuomo, who was one of the main anchors at the time, I was in his office, and one of the crew guys was walking by, like, this is one of those weird universe making things happen moments, and he was like, hey, Julia, good show last night. And Chris is like, oh, show, what do you do? And I said, I'm a musician, and he said, I want to hear your stuff. And so I sat there and I played him my music and then Sam Champion, the weather guy came in and I was just like, Oh my God. And Chris said, uh, basically he said, you know, I really believe in you. And if this is what you want to do, you know, I think you're good enough to get on the show. And so they actually put me on the show as an artist, um, which was a huge thing because then all of a sudden I had press and I had video of me doing something and I could pretty much email, you know, tons of venues on the East Coast and be like, hey, I was on Good Morning America. And they're like, great, come on, come on play. And I was like, what? It, that's it? Oh, that's it? You just have to get on Good Morning America? That's easy. It's not easy, but, you know, I got very lucky. I got very lucky. Um, right place, right time with that. So, yeah. You played in a lot of venues in the U.S. Can you tell us what some of your favorite venues are? Hotel Cafe in L.A. for sure. I, I love that place. Um, it's just such a, a, a great place to make your home um, as an artist. The Bitter End in New York is one of my, my all-time favorites because the owner, Kenny, is literally there every single night. He has so much passion for what he does. And, um, and he really takes care of 
um, of the people who play there. Um, and just along the way, I mean, tons of little venues from New Hampshire down to Miami and then up through Chicago. And I really love playing in Nashville too. And I think it was the Indigo Hotel. They have a bright red grand piano. So, and you just, in Nashville, it's really cool because you never know who's coming through the door. Can you tell us a little bit about your EP, Stories Between the Avenue? Sure. I wish I had some near me, but I don't because I just moved and I don't have anything right now. Um, I, I have everything on iTunes, though, which is great, digital. And it's called, my EP is called Stories Between the Avenues. It's kind of just a summary of my life in New York City, Stories Between the Avenues. And uh, since then, I've been doing a lot of singles. So um, I have some dance music, but most of it's, most of it's pop, I would say. And um, yeah, I'm actually getting excited because there is something different about going to record an EP or a full-length album. And um, I think there's a lot of pressure, especially for what I'm doing with social media, to put out content all the time. And sometimes that, that sacrifices the quality. Little things like that I would never put on an album um, just to have something. So I'm now writing my second, um, I don't know if it's going to be a full length or an EP. I haven't decided yet, but I've been writing a ton. And, and going through this process again has been really therapeutic because it's, it's really about the songs and the music. And um, it just reminds me of why I wanted to do this in the first place. What inspires your creative process? You know, I'd like to say I take secondhand experiences, but I'm really, really sensitive. I'm a super sensitive person. So I kind of make other people's life issues my own. <laughs> so it's not, I guess I just take it on. And, uh, and I used to be embarrassed about that. Like one of my friends is like, why are you so sensitive and emotional? I'm like, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't be. But I've just learned to take that feeling um, and tap it, tap into it as an artist and not a person. Otherwise I'm just an emotional wreck. But, but yeah, I think of course, like, you know, I hear stories and I, I, when friends go through something or if I just meet someone and I, I have a conversation, then for sure it's, it's something gets ingrained. I am um, a friend of mine runs an organization called beautify earth and they paint murals all over Santa Monica and Venice. And she's like, oh, we're putting together a music video and we need a song if anyone knows of someone. And that inspired me to go home and write a song about what they're doing. So um, I think that there's constant inspiration to draw from. And so I definitely take other people's stuff, but I, I feel like it is kind of mine because I'm experiencing it with everyone. If that makes sense. Okay, Julia, besides handstands, tell us something that you enjoy outside of music that your fans might not know about. I do a lot of handstands. <laughs> Never knew that would become so popular. But, um, no, I think, I think probably something that would be more surprising is I'm actually a little bit more of an introvert than I probably show, you know. I, get, um, I like to be around people, but then I like to have my time. Um, so some of my hobbies are reading or um, right now, since I just moved, I'm really into looking at furniture. I don't know if that makes me a, like an official adult now, but um, I like to do a lot of quieter things. So yeah, I've noticed that surprises people and I'm like, oh yeah, because of my social media, I look like I'm always so outgoing, but um, I get tired doing stuff. I like to have me time. So. Here's a hard one for you. If you could share the stage of any musician, past or present, who would that person be? It was just at Coachella, and I have to say, the the performer who just completely blew me away, and I did not expect it, was Florence and the Machine. Florence from Florence and the Machine. Um, there again, that will probably change in a week, but right now, I'm going to go with that. She was in, I mean, her energy, she was like sprinting at one point, And I just thought it'd be fun to be a part of that show. Or Ellie Golding. Ellie Golding's amazing. I'd love to collaborate with her. That'd be pretty sweet. You've done extremely well on YouTube. Has that surprised you? Do you have any tips for people out there who are trying to build the audience? I didn't really mean to do it, which is the funny part. Um, but 
basically the secrets are collaboration one collaboration you you have to collaborate with other people who have been doing this um, and the other secret is to, to get someone who has a following already to actually pay attention to you. You have to offer them something because it's, it is a ton of work to just, like I said earlier, to just, you know, what am I putting out next week and the week after, and then you're planning ahead, but also trying to do other things. Um, and I'd say to offer someone something like if you're just starting and you want to work with someone say, Hey, I've paid a videographer and they're going to shoot a video for us. I'd be like, done. That's one week I can just cross off. So, and yeah, consistency. And that's something I could be way better at too. Like I, I think, you know, the, when people know when you're posting, they know subconsciously it's like, Oh, okay. Um, Julia posts every Wednesday or Julia posts every other Wednesday. I do that with my friend, Anna. She posts every month, every other Monday. And so I like wait for it. And same with Taryn. Taryn is Tuesdays. So I'm like, Oh, Tuesday, I have to see what Taryn did. So Hopefully that helps. One of your latest videos was a very fun tune, and I think a lot of us can relate to it in the age of social media. But it looked like you had a lot of fun making Caught You on Facebook. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, it's funny. That was from 2009, and I I was going through my archives of old stuff, and I found that, and I'm like, man, it's really dated, but I still want to release it. So we shot that at the YouTube space with some friends, and it just made it – I mean, the actual shoot time – we had half an hour to actually shoot it, which is crazy. And um, it was one shot. So most of the time, I mean, an hour and a half, we only had the space from nine to 12 reserved. And then uh, the lighting took an hour and a half. We had about an hour to rehearse. And then we had literally 30 minutes to, to do the whole video. So we got about five takes in because, you know, not even five full ones, but luckily we had one we could use. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it was fun. It, it was a, a really fun song to shoot. Yeah, so. It's a very relatable song too, because I mean, you say dated, but it really applies to now or whenever. I mean, a lot of people forget that you're being watched everywhere now, especially with social media. Oh my God. It's the worst because, you know, you start, you start dating someone new and literally it's like, it's so easy to go and find out who their friends are, who they're following or who do they interact with. And, you know, I remember my first boyfriend in high school, like we didn't have all that and I couldn't stalk him and it was great. Like I, I didn't know anything. I only knew because we went, he was in, he was actually, I was a junior and high school and he was he was actually a junior in college we were like it was pretty risque at the time we did it for six years though so um wasn't that scandalous but like I remember we had a couple of mutual friends and I'd have to be like oh is he a good guy is he not but there was no pictures of girls that he had dated or anything like that there just it just wasn't around and there's something really nice about that nostalgic for that <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, it is, it's like what you, what is the expression, what you, um, what you don't know won't hurt you. So I don't want to see what my, you know, my boyfriend's exes look like. I don't need that in my head if they're like super hot or whatever, you know. So Facebook, the Facebook song. It's been great having a chance to talk to you again. Is there anything else you want to share before we go? Just in general, I was actually even thinking about you. I don't mean to, to you know, switch the, turn the tables around, but um, it's just been, been really, like, I just feel really lucky right now that people actually care about what I'm putting out. And you've been a great catalyst for, for that in general, with just um, helping artists get their voice out there. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, just, I think it's kind of an exciting time. There is a ton of stuff out there, but just to be able to, to finally be at a point where I, I just create music full time is literally, I mean, that's a dream in itself. So I'm just really grateful to everyone watching right now and to people who do, you know, support the music. Cause it's, it's, I don't know. I just, I, I feel really happy about it. Like I don't need a Grammy. I don't need, you know, I'd like to play with Ellie Goulding, but I don't need that. Like I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. 
If you enjoyed the interview, please subscribe on YouTube and Vitascape. Enjoy all the benefits listed on the screen and help us spread the music of indie musicians by joining our patron fan club. For more details, just click above the arrow. And don't forget to follow us on all your favorite social media sites.